Hey kids. Okay, this is lesson six. And much like yesterday when I showed you the objective, it's really the same. We're using the standard algorithm and some area models to multiply. So you can pause the uh, video or go back. Today's um, work is gonna be a little bit more in depth with larger problems. So we're stretching out our model into uh, using the distributive property to take these numbers apart and get kind of easier products and then add those together for the partial products and compare to um, the standard algorithm. So we're just gonna jump right in and start with our area model. So let's create the area model with this separated unlike with yesterday's. But the most important thing is that we are building it up with the larger place value positions here as you split it out or distribute it. And we're gonna work down from the ones. Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, etc. And make your box with plenty of room and fill it in so that you have your four sections. So let's kind of work these uh, one by one so you can see each partial product. So five times four is 20, and that extra zero from the 10 makes 200, or 40 times five is 200. Five times eight is 40, those are all the ones. So I'm looking at 240 here for the ones. Let's see if it works out. This is you know, the standard algorithm, so we start in the ones place. Five times eight is 40, carry the four. Five times four is 20, plus four is 24. The neater you make your work, the better it is because you have to line everything up by place value. This isn't just a big open space. This is still place value positions and yes, it matters. It matters very much where you put your numbers. Four times three is 12 and then we have a zero or a 10 here and we have a 10 here. So your partial product for these two is 1200. And eight times 30, we have the 24 from eight times three, and then the 10 on the end, so 240. Now when you add these, ideally it's gonna be really easy to kind of add as you go across because you should be looking at each place value position. So I have zero ones, and then I have four tens, and then I go to the hundreds and I say I have two here and two here, so that makes four, and then I don't have any thousands, and I have 1,000 here. So that when you get to this part where you're adding, uh, it should be really easy to put them together. And let's work this second partial product over here, okay? Sorry, too much pointing. Um, this is the key here. If this is the ones right here, okay, five ones, that is five times 48. That partial product goes here. Well, if that's that, then what's the next one? You move over to the tens place, and this is 30 times 48. So the partial product that goes here is 30 times 48. So I had better get 1,440. So I'm done with that, and I'm going to hold this spot with a zero because I am using the tens. This is three tens times the eight ones. Okay, so three times eight, you say, is 24. Carry the two over, but the four has to go in the tens place. Four times three is 12, plus two is 14. Line them up. Only the four goes under the two, and the one goes out here in the thousands place. So your partial product is 1,440 lined up in these positions. Now we add those, and we have zero, eight, and one and we have our 1680 so the standard algorithm is tied to this area model because each partial product should be exactly in this order if you do 30 on top and 5 on the bottom your partial products are going to be all different and they won't match the standard algorithm so the important part of today is to get everything to be lined up properly by starting with the ones on the top, then the tens, then the hundreds, etc. as you move down. But lesson six, um, we have uh, factors that have a three by two, 
and then this is going to be a pretty quick video and then lesson seven is mostly the same and we have bigger numbers so same idea same objective larger numbers and then we'll be working with some zeros so let's be quick about it and get this done 648 times 35 we'll do 648 three sections two rows we have 35 30 on the bottom five on the top remember start with the ones on the top and then we'll have our partial products so 6 times 5 is 30 and then we have two zeros remember be careful with the zeros 5 times 4 is 20 and then a zero 8 times 5 is 40 then uh, 600 times 30 we have the 18 and then we have one zero from here and two zeros from here 3 times 4 is 12 one zero from here and one from here 8 times 3 is 24 and don't forget the zero okay now these are the these will match the partial products uh, if you wanted to add them separately and put them down here that's fine I'm just out of room so we're gonna do our standard algorithm right here 8 times 5 40 I always like to put up the numbers so that you can see them and then I'm just gonna write right over it I don't like to erase them because I want to see what I did in case I make a, made a mistake I can go back uh, 5 times 4 is 20 plus 4 is 24 and then 5 times 6 is 30 plus 2 is 32 hold this with a zero because now I'm on the threes or three tens three times eight is 24 so I have four down and the two up and then um, Oh, I'm lost already. Three times eight is 24, four down, two up. Three times four is 12, plus two is 14. So many calculations. Three times six is 18, plus one is 19. So your first partial product is three, two, four, zero, 3,240. Your second partial product is 19,440, and in that order. So this one is here, and this one is here. You can double check over here if you wish. And then we add them up. Zero, eight, six, nine, 10, 11, 12, and two, and your final answer is 22,680. And you can add these up over here just to prove it, but it's gonna work out just fine. Next one, we're not using the model anymore. You're moving away from the model just because that was to prove that uh, taking it apart by place value position would help you to uh, get those partial products. Now you're on your own, seven, five, eight times nine, two. The most important thing, I can't stress this enough, is to write large, give yourself lots of room, and line everything up by place value position. If you do that, you will have great luck at uh, being successful. 2 times 8, 16, 10 plus 1, 11, 7 times 2, 14 plus 1 is 15. Check your first partial product and move on. Two is done so hold this with the zero because now we're working with nine tens and nine times eight is 72 and I just turned that right into a seven uh, nine times five 45 plus seven 52 five right over that one uh, nine times seven 63 plus five 68 and we only have two partial products. So start adding seven, nine, and six. And put your comma in. If you have a five digit answer, you need to have a comma because it's gonna be easier to read that at 69,736. 958 times 94. Also in this lesson, you have to know your times tables with the larger digits. Last time in lesson five, it was like one through five, and now we have one through nine. Uh, eight times four, it's too bad you guys aren't here because I always make you do all the work. Now I have to do it all, it's less fun. Uh, eight times four is 32. And then 20, five times four is 20, plus three is 23. Four times nine is 36, plus two, 38. First partial product should be 3832 or 3832. This is done. Hold that spot with a zero because now we're on nine tens. Nine times eight is 72. Seven up. Hee <laughs> hee. Not the soda. 
9 times 5 is 45 plus 7 is 52. 5 right over the top. Then 9 times 9 is 81 plus 5 is 86. Add. Again, be careful with your columns. 5, 10, carry the 1s. 9 and 10, carry the 1. And put in your comma with 5 digits, 90,052. 476 times 65, multiply. 5 times 6 is 30. 5 times 7 is 35, plus 3 is 38. Then 5 times 4 is 20, plus 3 is 23. 0 here, we're not multiplying with the 1s, we're on 10. So 6 times 6 is 36, I'm just going to use that 3. 42, 43, 44, 45, use the 4 now. 24 plus 4 is 28. Add those up, and we have 14, 8, 9, 8 plus 2 is 10, and 3, 30,940. And finally, this last one, 547 times 64. Nice and fat there. 4 times 7 is 28. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 2 is 18. 4 times 5 is 20, plus 1 is 21. Hold the 1's place with a 0, move to the 10. 6 times 7 is 42. 42. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 4 is 28. And 6 times 5 is 30, plus 2 is 32. Then add and add again. 8, 9, 10, 4, 5, and 3, 35,000. Last one, carpet costs $16 per square foot. A rectangular floor is 16 feet long by 14 feet wide. So this is for a square foot. How much would it cost to carpet the floor? So we have, uh, this is again where they're throwing in, you need to learn these formulas. If you wanna find the area of a flat surface in a room, uh, you would multiply the length of the room by the width and so uh, then you would find out the square foot cost. So 16 times 14 is our length times width. And 6 times 4 is 24. And 4 times 1 is 4 plus 2 is 6. And then we are done with the 1s and move on to the 10s. And we have 6 and 1. And so you end up with 224. What is that square feet? In the room and now I know uh, how many squares but what about the cost per square so uh, take your 224 square feet and multiply by your $16 per square foot and we do the same thing over again 6 times 4 24 and 12 plus 2 is 14 and 12 plus 1 is 13 I'm finished with that one. Just cross it out and put a zero. We have four, two, and two, and add those, and we get eight. Oh, sorry, almost multiplied it. Whoops, five, and then three. And this is going to be money, $3,584 to carpet the floor. And we're done after you label your answer. So I know I go really fast and you can slow the video down if you wish, but that is all about lesson six. Oops, we're not done. Oh man, can you sense the disappointment in my voice? Ah, sorry, we have two more word problems. That's okay, we are fully prepared for this. General admission to the American Museum of Natural History is $19, but it's totally worth it. If a group of 125 students visits the museum, how much will the group's tickets cost? 125 students and $19 per ticket. And we just start multiplying. 9 times 5, 45. 18, 19, 20, 122. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 2 is 11. So your first partial product is 1,125. Done with this. Hold that spot with a 0. Now we get to use 1. It's so easy. 1 times 5, 1 times 2, 1 times 1. And line these up very carefully. Don't make mistakes like that. That's what I call a rookie error. 
and three and two. And so we didn't have any decimals in here, so this is the final cost and the tickets will cost and that much. All right, next one. If the group also purchases, whoop, focus, focus. There it is. If the group also purchases IMAX movie tickets for an additional $4 per student, what is the new total? So how many students? Oh, and then we have to write an expression. So uh, how you calculate the new price? Well, we could do an expression for the top part too um, because we had to do the 125 times 19. Now this is just an expression to set up uh, what I'm doing here, expression and then solution. So what I would do is I want the additional four to become part of the expression, kind of like we did on our little math game. So if I have the 125 times 19, okay, now I need to solve that first, but then I'm going to have to multiply that by or add that to the multiplication for the next part, which is uh, all 125 students being multiplied by the additional four. Okay, so I also need to figure this out. And once I have this cost and this cost, I add them together to, and I get the new total. Okay, so I already did this up here. We just need to do this. 125 times an additional four. And five times four is 20. And eight and ten and four times one is four plus one is five and you're looking at five hundred dollars more and so then you would take your um, oh you just have to write the expression so we don't actually have to yes yes no sorry my bad what is the new total of cost of all the tickets so we're gonna take our two three seven five and add the five hundred dollars and easy peasy $2,875 is the new total for all the good stuff that you see at the museum and the movie. So it sounds like a great day. Anyway, um, that's it for lesson six. No more surprises on the back, right? Yes. Whew. We're done. See you soon. You guys are the best.